In terms of this weekend against Newcastle, Hoybier came in, did a really good job in the second half, albeit there was a few scares at the end where he nearly gave away that goal with a few sloppy moments out the back. Uh, but with Basuma's form, Ash, would you start Hoybier in the six this weekend? It's a techie one, but I would. I think this needs to come out. I think in terms of some people will say, ah, oh, they prefer to see Saar as a six or Benton as a six. I still see them as number eights. I think they're better further forwards. I know Bentancur is really good defensively. I know he has played there as a DM before, but Hoiberg, um, for me, he doesn't really start well, but coming on, he's been a lot better. So uh, against Newcastle, is he going to give us that same performance over a 90 minute, minute period or even like if, if he starts, is he going to do that? As a DM, I, he almost plays like a centre back because when we lose the ball, he kind of slots into that centre back kind of role. He kind of gets into that same defensive line. I would prefer him to, to see him maybe a few yards in front of the defence to protect, but I'm not mad at it when he does it. On the ball, sometimes he is a bit hesitant in terms of when we're trying to play out from the back. And I think that's a massive way we play in this 4 3 3 system. Um, that's where my concerns come because we did see it at the back end of that uh, second half when he did come on. He had a few lapses of concentration when he was playing out from the back. He played it across the face of the box and they almost scored. And then he did a, a pass, which was a straight pass. Again, he wasn't really looking and wasn't concentrating and they went off for a throw in that caused more pressure. And it's things like that, sloppy play like that, that creates dangerous situations where we get high turnovers. And that's when Johnny was talking about us conceding so many shots, you know, how many shots can we concede in this, this sloppy play like that. Where we, and also that affects the state of play, the state of game, the, the psychology of the players. So they start to lose momentum. They're not, you know, their heads drop a little bit because they're on the quash, they're conceding so much shots. So there is there is cause for concern to play Hoiberg ahead of Basuma. But I just feel like you have to drop him because it just sends out a message to the rest of the players. If you're not playing well, you get dropped. And I think that's the difference between, I'd say, a Pep and a Klopp. I think Klopp sometimes, like, Salah hasn't been playing well, Salah doesn't get dropped. You know what I mean? We can't be that club. If a player's not performing, especially if we're not trapping back, if we're not getting into that position, the, the, the centre of midfield is the hardest drop, in my opinion. But it's the most crucial job because you're covering the central spaces, you're covering the half spaces, and that's where teams tend to score and they create the most havoc. So for me, he's got to come off. And also for him, I would like to see him on the bench and to see how he will perform, you know, with 30 minute spurts to see maybe do we see a better Pesuma if he comes off the bench. A lot of people, a lot of influencers, I've heard them say they want to sell him. And I'm like, whoa, slow down. I wouldn't sell him. I think what he needs is competition. And I think sometimes he needs to know that, right, we're not the only six that can come in that, in that position. You need to be dropped and taught a lesson. So, um, like, at, at very least, at very least, the streamer needs to work on, you run to the end. You don't give up. You don't jog it. That's the worst thing he can do. Jogging, I think, I think Les Ferdinand mentioned it uh, about Harry Kane. He said, he said he spoke to Harry. He said, "Listen, mate, the type of player you are, you either sprint or walk. If you jog, your gait it looks terrible. It looks like you're disinterested. So whatever you do, Harry, don't jog. And I know when you're jogging, it's not like you're not trying to get back and help the team out. But the way you jog, it, you look lethargic. It's the same with Basuma. As soon as he starts jogging, that lazy tag is going to get slapped across them." And it's hard to shift off it. It's hard to shift that. That once people label you lazy, it's hard to kind of um, get that off your off your off your neck. Pause. But yeah, I, I, for me, for me, um, the disrespect for Hoybier is just ridiculous. I mean, the guy served us for three years. Look, um, under Mourinho, would you still be saying that if he gave away a goal in the last fifteen minutes against Forest? Because that I, passing I, I, was I, shocking. I, look, yeah, look, I, I, I could go to the um, the Burnley game, you know, where he came on and if it wasn't for his interception at the last minute, Burnley would have scored. He threw himself mm. at the ball to block a certain goal. 
in the last minute and we would have gone to a replay at home to Burnley who were absolutely shocking at that time. So look, there's swings and roundabouts. My point here is, is that, you know, I don't think the player is a bad player at all, right? I think he's a really good player. You know, he was ever present for three years under Conte Mourinho, but I think that the system is not kind to him. I think yeah. Rodri himself would struggle as a six in Angie's system, right? To play 90 minutes week in, week out. It's a really demanding role. Um, that's my opinion. It might not be right. But um, for me, um, he offers progression with the ball. He's a warrior. Um, it's, it's amazing how many times a post game that Ange highlights his contribution to the game. Go back and listen to the post game. He often mentions uh, uh, him coming on. In fact, no player in the in, in the whole team, in the whole squad, has more uh, contributions per game. He's played 31 games, more than anyone. Mm -hmm. He hasn't started 31 games, but he's played 31 games. He has contributed massively to uh, where we are in this season. And I think fans are just pushing it to one side like it's nothing and we need to get rid of him personally i'd like to see him get a new contract he's not going to be a 90 minute player but again a squad player that comes on he's driven he wants to win and quite honestly some of these players that are coming in you know they don't see the heart um their heads drop his doesn't right he'd come out with a gash down his leg and still come out and try and play 90. i'd start him but I don't think he will have the legs to play 90 minutes. So I'm the same with Ash. Bring on Basuma. I don't know what happened. That first 20 minutes, he was on fire, shooting, driving, and then he switched off. I don't believe it's the malaria. I, I'm not going to listen to that nonsense, right? Uh, because he would have been tested before the game. But, um, you know, again, you know, if we get rid of Hoybier, are we only going to bring in one six? What if he gets injured? We got a massive hole again. I, I just, I think we really need to address the situation that we've got in front of us now. The roles are really demanding. I think there's going to be a lot of substitutions under Ange Ball because it's so demanding uh, uh, the system, especially in the six. And uh, I think he starts on the weekend. I thought he was outstanding when he came on. I mean, he set the tempo um, with Benton Core. Um, it, when he came on and I think the shot that he had on goal from range um, seemed to fire everyone up to start having a go long may it continue uh, I be don't it. believe he's got 90 minutes in him though I don't it's a strange one with Bissouma, though, isn't it? Because I thought, like, against West Ham was probably his best performance in a while. Um, I thought he was brilliant against West Ham. And then he came on, uh, started the Forest game. Like you said, first 20 minutes was on complete fire. And then the last 20 minutes of that half, I mean, he completely let his standards drop. I was so annoyed with Bissouma in that last 20 minutes of the first yeah. half. And he got hooked off, and rightly so. But what is it with Bissouma? Like, he's so up and down at the moment. It's just frustrating me so much. And... His football if... brain, uh, Ben. His football. Look, his football brain. Look, football's about concentration. You have to concentrate for ninety minutes. And I'm sorry, you know, there's been moments, even when he was playing really well at the top of his game, that he let himself down. You know, the dive, the dive in the box against Luton. I mean, what was he thinking? Yeah. You know, there's been other moments where you know he's given the ball away. Um, he, he's, there's been a lot of moments. If you look back across the season, he's had the the brain fog moments. He's had quite a few brain fog moments. I still believe that there's a player in there. You know, I just don't understand. You know, when he was at Lille, he was a progressive attacking player, taking free kicks, scoring goals. You know, he comes to Brighton, he plays that, you know, uh, defensive uh, role fantastically for uh, for Potter. So when we signed him, I thought, you know, we got that hybrid version and he was going to be really dynamic. And then when I hear Conte saying he's not playing, he's still not playing. Why is he not playing? Because he doesn't understand my system yet. Well, hang on a minute. He's 25 years of age. What do you mean? He doesn't understand football. He's been there since July. It's now September. He can't get a game. I'm now beginning to think that Conte was right and my slandering of Conte over the Basuma incident and not getting, not playing him I was wrong and Conte knew exactly what was going on. And this is what we're seeing potentially now with him switching off.
I feel like Obasuma, he's not like he's not a, he's not a proactive defender. I feel like sometimes he's a bit too reactive when he's defending. I think he's obviously a very good tackler. He does make a lot of tackles, inceptions, but he's a bit too like reacting situations when people are running at him. He'll go and confront them and stuff like that. I feel like with Hoybier, he's a lot more. Uh, proactive when it comes to pressing, um, trying to win the ball back aggressively in the centre circle, uh, really being aggressive and being combative. So I think that is like a difference I definitely see when Hoybier came on. I think that was probably what um, Ange wanted. He wanted someone like Hoybier who was going to go hunting for the ball, who was going to be pressing in that centre circle, winning the ball back and getting Tonno on the front foot, whereas Basuma, he's a bit sometimes a bit too standoffish. He sometimes allowed players to run past him. He doesn't get his... He, he, I'm not saying he doesn't get stuck in. He makes challenges, but he's not like... He doesn't go looking for those pressing opportunities enough, I feel like, Basuma. I feel like he's not proactive enough in those situations. And for that reason, against an aggressive Newcastle team, I probably would start Hoybier. Um, as much as I don't think Basuma re that recently has actually been that bad, I think we need that a bit more proactivity from Hoybier on on um, on Saturday. And I think that's going to really help us control that depleted Newcastle midfield, which we need to make sure we do. But I've also uh, seen a lot of people in the chat talking about it. Apparently, Basuma and Saar were both um, fasting on Sunday because obviously they're both Muslim. Do you uh, maybe that, that's maybe that's do you something to do that with played, it. Uh, anything into so, the? Well, can I ask why then? Every single game where it's been Ramadan, I thought Ramadan had finished on Friday. Uh, I think it Friday. finished yesterday, didn't it? Oh, I thought it finished on Friday. No, maybe you're but right. Maybe you're even, right. Even even if it was on Sunday and it was that, then why didn't Spurs like every other team who has a Muslim player? Uh, arrange uh, to stop the game after 20 minutes so they can have a banana and a drink. Ange doesn't believe in it. I don't know. He doesn't like the, the dark art. Well, it might have been that they, they might have to do it in the art. second half, potentially, to do I don't know, because I don't know when the sun Isn't was... Isn't it supposed to be at nightfall? I mean, when yeah. did it get dark? I can't Probably remember. in the second half, I'd yeah. assume. So maybe it wasn't time. I think Johnny's got to go. He's got his... um, Listen, all right. Hi. Can I just say, Ben, thank you very much and Simeon for having me on. Unfortunately, I have to uh, to rush off and check that I have blood. And, um, Ash, always a pleasure to share the screen with you, buddy. Thank you, and man. thanks for having me on, guys. Johnny, let us know if it's blue blood, because if it's red, I don't think we're going to be able to have you on again. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> it's, definitely, it's, it's definitely blue. It's definitely blue. It <laughs> runs through my veins, through and through. Guys, stick Last one, Johnny. Thanks Cheers. Cheers, Johnny. You Thank you. Take care, buddy. Bye bye. Cheers, bye. Johnny. Um, yeah, but I guess that does bring an end to the show anyway. Asha, uh, any closing comments from you, my friend? No, not really. Um, yeah, like. I do you think? Do you think out. Ramadan? Do you think Ramadan did play a factor into those two Pelé's performance because they both were particularly poor? Um, yeah, like like I said, twenty minutes was amazing and then after that the concert i almost felt like i saw him slipping on the ball as well i felt like after the goal his head kind of dropped if that makes sense so yeah 100 like percent confidence player and i i don't know for me sometimes i think he overthinks in certain situations where like you said to me he, he's he needs to be a lot more proactive uh, and be more assertive on the pitch at times because in that middle of the park you need to stamp your authority and be physical and also be like the first at, at, the, um, at the site of danger. And there's different phases of the play where you kind of need to be helping your teammates out. For example, in that goal, when um, your doggy doesn't track his man, then that's when he needs to be more like alert. Obviously, mm -hmm. Romero was there ready. And because Romero makes his mind up early, then like Pasuma then thinks, oh, maybe I don't have to run back um, as fast. And maybe I'll jog back because Romero's got covered. And I think that's what's angering people a lot. And there was other situations where Poro, obviously on the other flank, he makes a mistake and then it comes across and then they get a shot. I think it was um, that player that everyone hates at the moment. He hates. Yates, he gets the shots off. Um, but then that's where you want Pasuma to get a foot in. You want him to be closer to the player, to close the angle off to stop the shot. And there's things like that where you're saying, bro, why are you not being proactive? Why are you not smelling the danger? Why are you not being closer? Because if you're not close to the player to stop the shot, then, you know, it's those things there that kind of, we lose our momentum. And again, it's him now, he's thinking, ah, oh, you know, 
he's overthinking certain situations and that, that's affecting his play overall. Um, so, yeah, I think he overthinks certain situations and I think he's not proactive enough. And, and, and that's a weakness of it. And as Johnny said, football is all about concentration. If you're not concentrating over any period of the game, you're going to get punished. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe Ramadan mm. did have an effect on his thinking because the food, the, you know, the oxygen to the brain. Well, cetera, someone has, someone on the in the comments saying the Pasuma is Christian, not Muslim, so Ramadan wouldn't apply. But I don't know. Um, oh, I don't think he is Christian. I don't think he is. I don't know. I don't know for sure about the religion of every single one of our players. Um, Could it be possible or not? Then it was over by then. So. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, um, but yeah, anyway, no, Sa, Sa was uh, worse, I think, than Basuma probably on the day when you take into the whole 45 minute and uh, he was most definitely fasting. So um, look, we can go on about who's fasting and who's not. Uh, I, I, I do find it mad. Like, I don't know how it can't have a difference when you're fasting and yeah. like playing. Like People say, oh, they get through it and they, it doesn't make a difference. But I just find it crazy how it when you're fasting the whole day, like I don't know how it can't have a difference like with the energy. It must do. But, because, because I speak to many athletes that fast and they say no water and no food. Yeah, how like, can it not one, make a difference? One thing not having food, but not having no water. The water that carries the oxygen to your brain, like that makes a, a huge difference on your performance. Like just some concentration and like attentiveness, like seeing details, things that like 100% it does affect. But I don't know whether that was mm. the case. And as I said before, there's other instances in this game where he has like you know lost his concentration and he has let things like let, let things go us it's not like it was just this game and that people are being super active this game it's it's the game before the west ham mm. game it's the game before the Luton game where you were like hang on a second what happened there but o o also i i think that that red card situation i probably didn't bring it up obviously that red card situation i thought that was the sumo got recorded for what danino got a yellow card mm -hmm. for i thought mm -hmm. that was a bit like I agree, and it was a it was a VAR red card from Basuma as well, wasn't it? They went to VAR, and I thought I thought it was a joke that they didn't go to VAR for the Danilo one. And that's what I mean by overthinking. I think that red card, I think him diving, letting the team down, like I think those things are starting to play into his game a little bit because, like when I saw him on the ball, there was a time when he drove the ball up the pitch, and uh, we were on a counter attack, and I'm like, oh yes an easy ball into Werner or Son and he misplaces a pass and we lose it. And I'm like, a confident Basuma doesn't misplace that pass there. Do you know what I'm saying? So it was little things that last 20 minutes, not just off the ball, but on the ball, started to creep into his game when I was like, yeah, he's not quite the same. He's not as confident. And I think confidence is a massive contributor in terms of uh, uh, when you're playing football, man. Hmm. Yeah, that, and that's why I would start Hoybier on Saturday because I know that Newcastle got a depleted field and if we can just really like assert ourselves and then like be aggressive against them, not like back off them and like make sure we're hunting them down. I think Hoybier right now is just a better better option for that and I think if we can dominate that midfield on Saturday, I think you know that's how that's a big way Newcastle play. They're very aggressive in the middle. They try to be combative, and they've got people like Longstaff and and people like that in the middle who, if you press them, they can be got at. So, I think that's why I think Hoybier I think should come in. I don't know about the bigger games. I think the bigger games when we have got Arsenal and City, I do think we should go with Basuma because I think this season we've seen in those games like Basuma could be up to it, and if he's on top of his game, then like that could be a big factor in those games. But I think in on Saturday I would start Hoybier. Also, one last bit because I know you guys want to end the show. I looked at Spurs's. Um average position on the pitch mm -hmm. compared it to other um, games that we played prior to that and I thought Spurs when I was watching it I thought we look really high up I don't know if you guys noticed that as well but I felt like we look higher more higher up than usual and I checked it and the average player positions in that first half especially we were a lot higher up the pitch now I wonder if that's got something to do as well with us getting exposed down the flanks. I know we've been exposed before in previous games, but I just noticed that as well. I looked at it on, on Sofa Squad and I was like, wait a minute, well, we, we actually did play a lot further up in that pitch and and maybe that mm. 
has an effect in that players running back because there's the distance that you have to get back to cover. I know Vicky van der Ven can cover a lot of distance, but the amount of players that have to run back to get in that position to kind of defend. Yeah, I can see here, like, Basuma's average position was, like, 10 yards or 12, 15 yards inside the opposition half and Hoybier was inside our own half his average position yeah. so he was a lot further back and maybe that yeah. was something as well to notice and maybe that was uh, an instruction at half time as well I don't know maybe that that's what we, they probably mentioned at half time guys that maybe Joppa, you know and people say and adapt maybe he adapted in that situation and was brave by taking those two players off and maybe saying look maybe Hoiberg dropped back a few yards and that was mm -hmm. an instruction I don't know I could be wrong but that's what I saw. I think uh, that is all we have time for today, guys. But I want to say big up to Ashmatic once again for coming on. Um, Ash, do you want to let the people know where they can find you? What's coming up on the channel? Yes. So we've got a show tonight. Um, it's going to break down it. We're going to break the game down a little bit further. Look towards Newcastle. I might get a Newcastle fan on. <laughs> I know one. Um, <laughs> oh, you know one, do you? <laughs> Yeah, I know a Newcastle fan, so I might bring him on for the show um, just to preview the game. He's got a lot of talk for Newcastle, so I'm, I'm contemplating. But yeah, it should be a good show tonight. And then Wednesday, we do a rival show, so there will be a lot of rival talk. Arsenal will be there, United, Liverpool. Well, we have a laugh as well, but yeah, it's going to be a smoky affair. Know that. So yeah, uh, we'll that What time's that? So we've got the rival show. That will be after the Arsenal Champions League game. So if you guys aren't doing anything after the Arsenal Champions League game, that's where it's going to be at. We're going to, we're going to live, we're going to air live then. Yeah, I was actually uh, talking to an Arsenal fan about this game tonight and I was like, Spurs have a massive say on what happens to Arsenal's season, all right? We got them at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium with four games to play, I think it is. And then tonight, I'm looking at tonight and this tie being like basically it's Spurs against Arsenal <laughs> in the Champions League as well, like Harry Kane and Eric Dyer. So Spurs I, have I, a big opportunity we're, we're to we're end not, Arsenal's season this year. We're not loading them Van de Ven instead of uh, yeah, Dyer to just for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. I wonder, I wonder if he's going to pick up Harry Kane. I wonder who's going to pick him up. It'll be interesting to see that little battle. I reckon Gabriel's uh, going to get very aggressive against him. Uh, yeah, I haven't been watching Bayern, but has he stayed up top? He hasn't done that like what he does at Tottenham. He hasn't drifted in. Has he? He, he always drifts. He, yeah, always, he drifts. always drifts. <laughs> but uh, we'd be interested to see if Gabriel man marks him and follows him around. like, And if that pocket of space opens up in behind, I think that's tactically quite interesting anyway. Yeah, well, they got the option of Declan Rice as well to patrol the middle. So maybe it will just be a zonal thing where Harry Kane goes. Um, each specific player will go. So maybe if he's in the third of the pitch, it'll be Gabriel. Yeah, and if he drifts yeah. in the middle, it'll be Declan. Rice, Rice picks them up. Mm. But yeah, I think he could still be a fawn in that side, man. I hope so, man. I mean, he's the biggest Arsenal killer of uh, of a generation. So let's hope it carries on tonight. But Ash, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on today. And thank you, everyone in the chat for joining us as well. We'll see you all very soon. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.